what do they say back? Like when you say something really I crazy. Mean, well, I just some guy was like, "Hey, what you, what's up? How you doing this wonderful Sunday?" <laughs> and I was like, "I feel like an AIDS patient in '82. How about yeah. you, sweetheart?" <laughs> nice. Hey, Anthony, where'd you get this podcasting stuff from? It fell off the back of a truck. We're back on another episode of Breaking Bread. I'm here with my co-host, Sal The Voice. How you doing? And we're proud to say we finally have Meals by Kujan, a.k.a. Danny Mandela. What's going on? How you doing? How are you? How did it all start, this, you know, love of food? Because you really do love food. I mean, we all jokes aside, the the videos aside, the, the, the TikToks aside, the... The, the quips that kind of made you go viral, all aside. You really do love food. You're a, you, yeah. you have a history as a cook. Yeah, yeah, cook. I used to work in delis. That's awesome. I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. When I first worked in food, I would just work in a deli, make sandwiches. And then some guy's like, hey, you like doing that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> because I was just like building a sandwich, but like doing it like, you know, being like a professional sandwich maker, I was like, yeah, I guess I do. There's like some sanitation work, a good guy. So, yeah, I guess he like made me realize that I love food a lot. And I just always worked in food. It's all, it's all I know. Yeah. You I like know? how you do the balsamic glaze. Like that one time that you, that you went to Mario's and you did the sandwich with like Mo. Yeah. It was like he was like an artist. He was like did this thing where he was like. And he was so into it, like his yeah. hair was flowing everywhere. Yeah, the, the wrist action high school, yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> high school. <laughs> Diddy. <laughs> Diddy. How do you think I got this far? <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> What's like a day in the life of Koosh? So like, so most like you wake up, you know, I, I, love your, I love your morning stories, by the way, when you're like down like horrendous and he's oh, got like yeah. McDonald's or like a Sfoyadel. Yeah, it's so good. Um... <laughs> Mainly, I haven't been doing much, so like this is probably the earliest I had to get out of bed in a while. Thank you. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Normally, I get out of bed at like twelve thirty, and then I just shower, shit, go for a walk, eat something, and then I just go on TikTok for eight hours, and then I go to bed or go out and just be out of control. <laughs> so it's one of the two. But, you know, this is good for me, you know, I'm like working. Yeah. You know, I haven't been filming too much lately. Losing a little bit of the uh, inspiration. Is that right? I think that happens. What do you think it is? You think it's like it's you like, feel like you've eaten everything or? I just feel like I've, I'm just like tired of like making food videos. I don't know. They're not as easy to make anymore. They okay. used to just like. Be able to make it, and it would just get a million views, and I'd be like, ah, cool. But now I have to, like, try a lot, and, like, every line has to be funny and thought out, and the uh, dish has to look good, and it has to be creative. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm not. Like, I get that. I'm lazy, you know? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, so the reason why we as entertainers love our jobs is because it's never really work. We love to right. do it. It makes us happy, and it brings a lot of enjoyment. But sometimes it could feel like work. Right. Right now it's feeling like work. And that's what kind of pushes you away. But, but that consistency is key. Right. It's very, uh, it's hard to get up over your ass and do it. Listen. When you're like, uh. Put it this way. Ford Motor Company has been in business for over 100 years making Fords. And yeah. some Fords yeah, have been the biggest down. pieces of shit <laughs> on the planet. Blowing transmissions. There was a, there was a time in the 80s, that, uh, late 70s. Blowing Ford, trans, huh? Ford, <laughs> blowing trans. <laughs> there was a time in the late 70s, Ford made a car called the Pinto, right? It would get rear-ended at 10 miles an hour and blow up on fire. But they didn't quit. They kept making cars and a lot of shit boxes. But they're one of the biggest automakers in the world because they stayed consistent. Because like they kept man, making cars. Beans. How yeah. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that, that consistency is key. And something you got to know, Kuj, is you are ubiquitous. You are... You are Take gonna, it easy with the big word. I don't know what ubiquitous. that means. Ubiquitous. That's a seven. No. Your, <laughs> your personality is not only known, but well-loved all over the world, which I'm sure you know by now. All five boroughs. All five boroughs. <laughs> no, I'm talking all... <laughs> 
corners of the world. When I meet someone from Europe or from the Middle East and they find out I'm from New York, they said, you know who I love from New York? And they go, Kush. <laughs> it's, it, ha- it never fails. It, it is so, it really, that's, what, that's the ubiquity of it all. That, that is the question I get asked the, the most, Kush, like really truthfully, is like, oh, yeah, it, like see that you know that guy Kush. I'm like, yes. And they're like, what is he like? Like every time it's like clockwork, the same exact question, the same exact like the lead up to like the question, same exact thing. You People are very know, curious about you. You want to know yeah, what's I know. crazy? I try to keep like my life as private. Well, that's the thing. You you really mo- like I'll show like like five seconds on my story of like yeah whatever I'm doing, but like, I don't give anything more or less into that. You hanging out with you is obviously very different from. You know what people see on the internet. Yeah, I'm not making sister jokes. Right. Well, no. Besides, seven. besides that, you know, everyone wonders. As, as I did myself. You know, Kuj, you're one of those people that when I met, I was I was a little starstruck. I was like, wow, I wonder what this guy's going to be like. And I had a very short conversation with you, and I was like, wow, this guy's really fucking cool. Like, just just chill, relaxed. Yeah. I think that's you know, kind of what you've always been. And now this this stardom, this growth is kind of just like that thing you got. You know, you, you, you've you maintained that kind of, you know, chill head. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's going to, that's going to, sp- that's going to speak volumes into your longevity yeah, in this it's always world. about, yeah, I guess just staying humble. Well, I think a lot of like my friends keep me humble because yeah. they're like, what are you a loser? You make videos on the internet. Like, what are you doing? What are you? Same thing with like my, you know, brothers. So like that, I guess that helps. Plus, it's just I don't know. My demeanor is very calm and cool, collective, very even keel. Yeah, and plus, I just don't care that much about anything. Is that right? So I'm just. I like, love that about you. Bro. <laughs> yeah, I literally don't care. About yeah, a single thing. It's, so it's drives, cool. It's cool. Like, you could think, like, there could be, like, Al Pacino there, and Kuj be like, yeah, how you doing? Yeah, how are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seen his movies. <laughs> yeah. That's outstanding. So you don't you don't get, like, any sort of starstruck, because you're meeting and hanging out with and rubbing uh, elbows with some really big-name celebrities. Not really. I guess I just try to stay normal. Yeah, man. I'm quiet as is, so it doesn't even, like, matter. So right. Like, whether it's Al Pacino or Greg, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, stay the exact same. Greg, can you give us a hua? Hua. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I don't know how you stayed calm around um, Eli Manning. That yeah. had to be really cool. That would have to be cool. Yeah, I, was, I mean, that, that was really kind of cool. funny because I didn't prepare anything for that. So, like, three minutes before, I'm, like, asking the producer, I'm like, can I say this line? And, like, Sabino's like, yeah, yeah, just think about it now. You know, <laughs> wait till the last second. So, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of was like, it's work. When you, like, film with them, you just got to be like, all right, he's working, I'm working. We're two working schmucks right now. Right. Let's get this fucking video done so I can go home and watch TV by myself because I don't want to be here right now. And that's how I always live, you know? And this is this is also something that I've I've heard from a lot of performers uh like you you kind of you kind of get a little a little worked up for the thing and a little nervous about the thing and you want to just get through the thing yeah and go back to to your your safe zone yeah yeah, yeah the way you want to go back to the comfort zone you just want to go back to putting your feet up and being yeah. cool yeah yeah getting it over with this is just like a small part of my life which That's it amazing. really is on like yeah a it's, grand it's scheme like. it's a few hours of of you know a day, and a maybe it's week. a few days a month. A week. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's what it is. And then, but those few hours, what everyone sees, and then you know, very few people just see me drooling at a bar at three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm curious because <laughs> your personality is very reserved, and you're at these places where you know it's a it's a really big party atmosphere. Are you kind of just cushioning out? Floating through the crowd? Yeah, yeah. I'm just like people watching, getting material. Oh, wow. So you derive a lot of... I do sometimes. From what you're seeing. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, God, yeah. I like that. You're like you're like a quiet observer. Yeah, I just yeah, love yeah, yeah. people watching. 
That's like one of my favorite pastimes. People watching. That's cool. Me too. That's something an artist does. Mm. Like, Kuj, if you actually think about it, and Sal and I have like talked about this, not just about you, but just in general. People don't understand to do what you do on social media. It is an art form. It does oh, yeah. take like a lot of thinking. Like, you know, you obviously, Kuj, you manage your own content. Right. Kuj could be humble as he wants. You know, there's a there's a certain level of, of thought and creativity that goes into that. And 100%. That's, that's part of it. I think that's part of maybe something you right, don't even yeah. realize. Yeah, you, know, you, you, real, you don't realize that at first, but I think the more and more you do it, the more and more you realize, oh, that was good. Like a lot of like the uh, beginning coups, like the take care, brush your hair, and yeah. the Diet Coke, and settle down, and uh, wh- whatever other taglines I used to say. Like I didn't realize like what I was even doing then, but it was like you know, kind of just like built a whole brand. Now, you and I are only you know you you me and Anthony we're only a couple years apart. So we all grew up at the same time. And I know in high school, not a lot of my friends were saying, take care, brush your hair. That was something I heard around guys. Like, uh, I, we, I got a friend who, if somebody comes up to us and he's a total jerk off, right, and he's, you know, talking a lot of shit, he's like, we just, we just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when, when he says goodbye, he goes, yeah, it's nice to meet me. And like things, <laughs> little, little things like that. Take uh. care, brush your hair. Uh, you know, all the, obviously all the sister jokes, that's popular. But yeah. is that all like kind of because you, you said you were you were kind of throwing it in almost subconsciously, like you weren't even realizing what you were doing. Right. It's kind of old school. And is that something like you you heard growing up or is that something you heard on the street or were you and your friends like real old school guys like that? No, nah, like take care, brush your hair. I think I heard like at my first job uh, in the deli in Staten Island. The deli guys. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. they would just be like, "All right, take care, brush your hair." I'm like, "Yeah, that's fucking good." I'm using that's that. fucking <laughs> good. So a lot of like, like the settle down that was from that deli. The how you doing was from that deli. Like we would just be like, quarter pound of macaroni salad, and then someone else would be like, "What do you need? Quarter pound? How you doing? All right, quarter pound? How you doing?" <laughs> like, cause like the word wouldn't like come out, so you just say, "How you doing?" Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the things like the modern I just heard growing up. But of like course. the motto and scale, that was the motto and scale. That was, that was just iconic. On the fly. That's iconic. Yeah, that is pretty iconic. Because I think that's what started. You know, you, when you talk about okay, the the food influencer world. Like every time someone picks up a slice of pizza, everyone's likening it to Dave Portnoy or something like that. Dave right. Portnoy was rating pizza, right? And it was out of a scale of ten. Right. And then I think you were one of the first people I saw. I know this is this is crazy to think, cause like, how do you point to the genesis of something? But you were one of the first people I saw that was rating something on a scale of Marons <laughs> in your car, and it, which I love the background. I love like the yeah, you in that. the car, like you yeah. know, it just adds to it. Upstate, just being a fucking jerk off. Yeah, outstate. You're in the middle. That's the other thing. You're in the middle of New Paltz. Yeah. Which, if no one's familiar with New York, is the middle of fucking nowhere. It is. It like, is. you're you're about you're about like ten minutes. From if you pull over on the side of the road to change your tire, you got a seven out of ten chance of getting kidnapped and getting your kidney pulled out. <laughs> you know, like deliverance up there. That's what we. That's what we go to to climb up in a tree for five hours and shoot something with horns on it. Yeah, basically. Go on the limb. And you're up yeah. there, and you have you seemingly have this endless supply of content, and it doesn't even have to do with you know. Wow, there's a lot of places up here. It's your ability to keep the viewer kind of locked in right. and waiting on that score. I want to hear how many Marones. Right, and this score is, like, made up, too. It didn't even, like... Right, but it's spawned... At one point, I think I did about 30 videos in a row, and all of them were 9 out of 5. <laughs> how many 9 out of 5 Marones. out of 10. It's like, how many are the 9 of Marones? Yeah, but it's it's almost like it didn't even matter what you rated. Nah, People it just didn't. wanted to hear it. They just wanted to hear it. They the just wanted to hear it. Right. AK brush your hair. Right. Cause, and then what happened from there is not only did it spawn, you know, people like I seen a lot of kids on, especially on TikTok and Instagram, rating, have, putting a name to their rating system in right. kind of a similar way. But you brought all those old school terms. That we would right. hear in delis. You brought it back into the modern vernacular. Right. You had people, you know, in college 
at high school, like my little cousins, 13, 14 years yeah. old, are going, you know, take care, brush your hair. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, take yep. it easy, I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> like, yeah. I, you know, I hear that from Tommy. I'm used to yeah. it. Not oh, from yeah. my little cousin, Louisa, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, you, you, you really uh, brought a lot of that old school culture back into, into the modern, uh, right. you know, you modern language. You keep it going. I you, mean, I don't know. That's just how I grew up. Like, even Ming, like, I, Ming. I grew up, like, hearing that. But I, if I have to, in other words, if I have to point to, like, an event that brought that back. You know, like, some people can point to the okay. first person who wore bell-bottom jeans in the 1970s or whatever on TV. You're the guy. Who, who kind of brought it all back in a big way, in a meaningful way. Yeah, you bridged the gap. Like, you yeah. like you bridged the gap be between, like, the Zips and, like, the Italian-Americans. Like, you're, yeah. like, the in-between, like, with, like, the, with, with all, like, the slang words and everything. But there, there's one question I had for you, Kuj, which um, you could tell me I'm, you could tell me I'm an asshole if this sounds retarded. But, uh... I mean, it's going to be retarded. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, I don't, I don't really think it's that retarded, but... Intellectually um, disabled. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, I feel like a new avenue of content for you, because I love watching you do it, is like the DMs f from like the dating apps. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Bro, I love that. Like, I look forward to you like <laughs> watching like the response. Like, if you did like right. a screen recording, bro, and just like your reaction, like that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I'm really just on Hinge and... I don't even think I've, I've probably met up with like one or two girls off Hinge. The rest I just fuck around and just try to get a funny DM. Out That's of it. outstanding. You gotta do a series and call it Unhinged with Cooge. That's like Cooge's yeah. crowd work. You're the yeah. Matt Rife yeah. of <laughs> of Hinge. Right. Yeah. What do they say back? Like when you say something really I mean, crazy. Well, I just some girl is like, "Hey, what are you, what's up? How you doing this wonderful Sunday?" <laughs> and I was like, "I feel like an AIDS patient in '82. How about yeah. you, sweetheart?" <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, cool. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I could just pull that. That's got to be like 50 50. Like, and this poor get, girl. You either some of them like know who I am. That's nice. So well, that's, fun. that's good. They play along. And then this girl just had no clue. That's the trouble. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that like, was just, my follow up question was, <laughs> you've said do they something, always know who you are. Well, you've said something so ridiculous that like someone can't possibly take it seriously. And what you're saying is some people are so just absent minded that they're right. like, what? Why would you say that? Yeah, oh my it's god! Because well, you have the hinge uh, messages. Like, what about like the DMs you get on like Instagram and TikTok? Yeah, I mean TikTok. No one really DMs me on that. That's weird. Right. <laughs> Shitty shit. Uh, <laughs> Instagram, I do. I j but uh, you know, I always try to bait for more. You know, I always want like more and more. You know, a lot of them are like reoccurring members that I post on my story. <laughs> like they just continue to just throw wild things at me, and I'm gonna continue to. I think they they probably them on. they probably like that they're getting oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the story. You know, they tell like all their friends yeah, the that's story me. and like you know, yeah, they who is like you know. <laughs> and I, I told Kush I want to gargle his dick. What? That's outstanding. <laughs> it really is. like some of the stuff that you see in these messages are. Like, really wild. Yeah, some people are like, oh, you like, uh, those are like fake, right? And I'm like, no, I'm not that creative. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have the balls to say that. You got a good one? Do I have a good one? Do you have, I any, think do you have any DMs that stand out that you can, like, remember? I think that's, that's, he went, Greg, when, uh, we, when we asked him about it before, he went right to the. Yeah, yeah, he, he knew. <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah, I, sure, I, I got one from this morning when I was on the toilet. I, I have, a uh, the like, a, you know how you do the albums in the yeah. phone? So I have 194 screenshots. <laughs> that's outstanding. I mean, not all of them are, like, sexual. You know, so once in a while there's, like, uh, you know, a positive one, like I was going to kill myself, but then I saw your video. I was like, anyway. Wow. Oh, wild. <laughs> like the green day of Jesus. the influencer world. <laughs> Uh oh, here's one. I'm a local bookie. If you need some sports action, <laughs> that's great. These are just like random. I don't know. I just have a bunch. That's wow. crazy. I was waiting for the photo vault. I thought you were gonna pull that out. No, no. I keep that on the. Uh, <laughs> nobody's got to know nothing about What's that. What's like some of the craziest DMs you've gotten from some uh, some people? This girl kept asking me for an enema. <laughs> really? <laughs> what would make her think? That you were qualified to deliver an enema. 
I don't. I don't That's know. the question you asked. Well, yeah, I got a turkey baster at home. <laughs> if he's qualified, well, I you know I was just like uh, first I I was like I think I know what that is and I googled it. I was like oh <laughs> yeah right it's it's not a sexual thing it's awful yeah I mean I didn't look too much into it but I did quote a fifty grand on that <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have done it for fifty I think you should have done it yeah for I think 50. you should have done it for fifty. I have 50 grand, that's worth it. You should have done it for 10 and asked her if you could get well, the video I'm for an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, but you could make if you if you take a video like that and put it on OnlyFans, you know, it's not it's not something like like I said, it's not overtly sexual. It's kind of gross, but it's it's, it's kinda, a medical procedure. It it's I think a lot of people would pay to see a lot of sick people <laughs> out there would pay to see that. Cooge giving an enema. Only Cooge. Wait, giving you could have made getting, like a million no, dollars. I'm getting, I'm getting the enema. Oh, she wants to give you an enema. Yeah. Wow. Oh no, fifty grand is was way too way too low. Double it's it. too low. It's Double too low. No, no. If it's not gonna be filmed. If it's gonna be in like the private. No, I don't care if house. it's not gonna be filmed. I gotta remember it forever. I don't know, suitcase of I 50 would just grand. take like a one of those <laughs> you dress pill, like I would take like a Xanax <laughs> blackout. <laughs> I don't think an enema with a stranger is a time for blacking out on Xanax, Kush. I would have, like, someone on, like, the other side of the door. Oh, like security. <laughs> I think yeah. you want to be awake and conscious for the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But what, if she, what if she tells the guy, like, hey, an enema's going to take uh, three and a half hours, <laughs> and the guy nah. never comes back? I have some trustworthy, you know. All right, good. Individuals. How you doing? A <laughs> <laughs> couple of HYDs on the other side of the door. Yeah, you need them. Yeah. You, you know. need them. But I don't think an HYD would want to interfere with something like that. You want to see it? Nah, you think I mean, Mo would do it? Yeah. Yeah, Mo would do anything for five grand. <laughs> 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 Needed the money, cause. Cause. Have you ever had like like uh, someone DM you like you know, uh, Kuj, I'll give you a certain amount of money to be the father of my child or something like that? No, not money, but um, I was actually I was with Mo and he was wheeling. His two daughters in the scroller. Yeah. So he was like, oh, you want to push him? I was like, all right, whatever. I'll play uh, whatever, dad or whatever. Uncle Kush. Uncle Kush. So I'm wheeling, and then Mo starts filming me. He's like, send it in. Don't pull out no more. You could do this. <laughs> so I post that on my story. And, you know, I got a couple of, you know, put a baby in me. That's nice. A couple of things like that, yeah. Wow. It's fantastic. Wow. That's amazing. Kush yeah, not for their fathers. <laughs> Kuj, um, one one question I, I I haven't asked anyone yet, but I've been waiting to ask like you or like Mo or one of the like top dogs in like the influencing world. Um, how do you feel about like the possible ban on TikTok? Oh, um, I I don't really try and think about it. It's like my future. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it is like my biggest revenue stream for like brand deals and shit. So. That could severely impact me and fuck me in the ass. No diddy. But, no diddy. <laughs> you know, if it happens, it happens. Gladly, I have, like, Instagram and a little YouTube following. So, like, I'm not going to be completely fucked. And if they do ban it, then it fucks everyone up. You right. Know? Yeah. But it really fucks, like, the, like the influencers, influence, influencers. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. the ones that are, like, dancing and, like, doing nothing. Right. <laughs> So right, like, the people whose those collabs, are the ones that are like yeah, the, the, the people whose collabs are literally doing the dance yeah. that they did with someone else. Right. Yeah. So like, because there's no Instagram, right, for that. Like Instagram, that's not they that content. That. Like, it's two different types of content. Like some crosses over, but like that shit doesn't really cross over. So for them, I would be shitting a brick right now and trying to get into something else. But for me, it's like, all right. I mean, I don't think it's gonna happen. Agree. I think there's too much money. Yeah, in the sure. American market, I um agree with you though. I don't I don't think it's gonna get banned. Like I always find it interesting to get a take from from someone like you or Mo or I you know one of the one of the people that um what's the word like I guess would have the greatest impact on. Yeah, right. but yeah. um I agree with you though. There's too way too much money involved. Way too much like wrapped up. Like we're talking sports organizations. We're talking. Movie stars, yeah, there's artists. a lot of jobs in the American markets just from based on TikTok. Yeah, you guys with the PR, with yeah. the uh, small businesses. So yeah, I mean, if they do ban it, they are gonna fuck a lot of people. But you know, whatever, life's there to get fucked, right? <laughs>
everyone's got to get <coughs> fucked once in a while. Someone's just waiting with an enema, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about big money in this. Get the bad only. Zuckerberg's got <laughs> Zuckerberg's got billions of dollars into lobbying to put this through. Yeah, that he guy. he wants to see TikTok disappear. Hundred yeah, percent, he does. How 100%. do you how do you, YouTube? How do you Google. think we make Zuckerberg disappear? How you think? I don't know. Like he's already like half disappeared. He's so white. Like he's basically clear. <laughs> he's like see through. Yeah. If you hold the, if he needs an X-ray, like you a just, slice of you, know? you hold the, you hold a flashlight <laughs> up to the <laughs> back of him. Thin, yeah. Extra thin slice of Brazil. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's definitely lobbying. I know YouTube's lobbying hard for it because I think YouTube's the one. Taking a crack, yeah. Because Instagram has like held the test of time, right? Definitely, you know, like like our generation used to use Facebook, right, and like Snapchat, but now it's really and Instagram. But now Instagram is the only one that like stuck around. Yeah, I guess they like adapted and Instagram is like the only one. And forgive me because I'm like a little uh, inept when it comes to all this stuff. Instagram is the only one that I'll find myself scrolling and then wondering whether I'm on TikTok or Instagram. Yeah. And the Instagram comments are so funny. Oh, my God. Bro. People are nuts. <laughs> People They're are brutal. nuts. People are ruthless. Brutal. Yeah, this, this guy on uh, not last Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving before commented something like ridiculously like ruthless but like so stupid. And like I caught it. And so I like screenshot it and posted it. And like. They went at this guy's entire family. <laughs> job. Yeah, that's outstanding. Like that's they, like that's I think the best part like, about having like his, a loyal fan base. His uh, his page on Instagram was public, yeah. so like he said something like so ruthless, like you're useless to society, be Papu. and like every single picture on his Instagram had horrible comments. I scrolled down to like three years. It's like a picture <laughs> of his newborn baby, and so. <laughs> And so, and one of the, com- and there's one comment. I click on it. Get rid of it, <laughs> bro. So I had one question. Um, the transition of your hungover car videos to then doing places and now cooking in your own, um, in your own place. Like, what do you have more fun with? Like, do you just like once you start cooking, you kind of just like comes naturally, and you're just like fucking around, or like. Like, when you're cooking at your house, like, does right. it just come naturally? Yeah, no. I mean, half it's, like, written, and then half's, like, naturally. You're talking about, like, the shit I say? Yeah, like, when you're cooking, and, like, like you, you have, like, seven or eight ad-libs in, like, the cooking videos. That right. You yeah, most of them are uh, set up. That's why, like, it takes me so long to write a video or so, because those lines just don't come easy. Like, right now, I'm working on a mortadelle egg. Fontina, provolone, some kind of spread on focaccia. Mm. Fried, fried mortadelle. Oh, yeah, that's even best, better. That's the even best better. way to have that's mortadelle. Like, uh, yeah. Even better. Yeah, I don't know. I'll see with this fried mortadelle sandwich. Yeah, if I can make I'm going to do it in a robe. I got a white robe now. Come on. Man. <laughs> Did you, you got it embroidered? So I saw that. sent me Koska Exports, C-O-S-C-A. Yeah. It's like this aesthetic mood board page on instagram it's like one of my favorite pages it's been around for like five six years but he just sent me a bunch of like this stuff and he like gave me a robe with cooj on it oh my this god that's amazing unbelievable that's out soaps towels sweatshirts i love a good robe the, the robe is great because you know if I mean? you're just around the house right you want to be comfortable you want to be free i mean i've been wearing robes since i was like eight years old is that right <laughs> like a <laughs> robe guy big robe guy Straight up, just underwear robe. You like to luxuriate. Kuz, there was one thing that you told me um, the first time that you came to the studio that always stuck with me. And like, I feel like it's going to come true very soon. I feel like we're going to see a rise of LinkedIn as, as like a major platform. LinkedIn? Yeah. You know, I have a LinkedIn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I post like once a year. You know what it is? I used to like make posts on my friends like, oh, I just got a new job. And I'm like... Would you have to blow to like get the job? <laughs> Amazing. And they would like delete it, and then they would text me like, "Yo, this is a serious thing." And I'm yeah, like, "Yeah, what the fuck? You're a jerk off in marketing. Like, fuck off." <laughs> no, but that's what makes my it golfing great. buddies are gonna see this. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's your way. That's the way you talk. So technically, that would be what your page would be about, and you get a pass for it 
on fucking LinkedIn. Right. Like, that's dope. I think, yeah, I think it's like my job is sandwich sandwich artist on that. I think that's what it is. Cougine, sandwich artist. You know, it's legit. Yeah, your sister's favorite influencer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have like a set of favorite places that you like to go? Like a set of favorite restaurants or? Yeah, I mean, I kind of just go to like the neighborhood spots. Yeah. Staten so, Island. In Staten Island. Oh, you, you live in Brooklyn now. Yeah, so I just go to like, I don't know, I just live in the neighborhood. I'll just support the neighborhood. It doesn't mean it's like my favorite or the best. It's just, you know, going to live on the block. I'm going to support right. the block. Yeah. That's very I like important. That. I like that. That's I think very that, important. I think that's important, right? Yeah. hundred I mean, percent. Once in a while, there's, you know, you venture out. But. There's a lot of great pizzerias on Long Island. I love them all, right? But right. I go to Papa Dell's and Beth Page because it's in my neighborhood. Right. And it's where I've been going for the last, you know, 28 right. years. Same thing with me and Staten Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we just go to Rossville. And Pete. it's solid. You want right. you want them to be around forever. Right. It's nothing. It's not the greatest. Yeah. You don't want but fucking. It's good. You don't want Blaze Pizza coming into your neighborhood. Right. Because you didn't <laughs> fucking eat enough for your local spot. Right. I don't want Papa John's. You talked about What's McDonald's that? before. Oh, I know McDonald's you like McDonald's. My favorite. That's your go-to. That's my go-to. It's okay. If well, you well, fuck yourself, Greg, that's why you're not on camera. <laughs> wait, wait, well, what did you say is okay? He said it's okay. okay. I'll tell you what. I think it's, I think it's, I like McDonald's. It's consistent. It's consistent. it's consistent. That's the thing. My uncle. You know what it is? Yeah. If I eat Wendy's, I got to shit. McDonald's, I don't really got to shit. Wendy's? Yeah. See, I find Wendy's is something of quality. Like well, that's because I, I they have Wendy's. the square patties and they don't cut corners. Right, so they they <laughs> they've uh, they've Rice lulled you into broke. a sense of uh, right. you think it's good. You Rice think it's good. Broke. I yeah. mean, it can't be that bad. Who, I mean, but now they but got it can't all be like that good. <laughs> well, now they have all the new school, you know, fast foods like Shake Shack, Chick Fil A. Right. I mean, I don't that's know. Meant. I don't know how like old they are, but like I never remembered. No, we didn't have Chick Fil A as a kid. Yeah, Shake Shack. We didn't have. Yeah, we didn't have Shake Shack. Nope. Uh, Not even up here. Chick What's the other place? Shake Shack, uh, Five Guys. Five, five Guys. Five Guys is very good. Five Guys. Is but Five Guys is, is not fair. Five Guys are expensive. You get a burger it and oh, it's, fries, it's thirty dollars. Yeah, but then you get fries. They fill the whole fucking I bag love with that. fries. It's fucking potatoes. You know how cheap that shit is. <laughs> exactly. They do the right thing. Cool. McDonald's should be loaded the fucking bag up with fries. Saudi Arabia in that fucking bag. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> McDonald's is meant. It never steers me wrong. You know what That's I like? I get the. Uh, they don't have it on the menu anymore. I think they used to be the number two, which was the, the two cheeseburgers the two cheese and the fries. And yes. That's my go-to. I get that. They have it on Grubhub. Sick. And then I get a little side nugget side, car, you know? Side, yeah. Four-piece. Side car nuggets. They have I the like best that. nuggets. I was going to say about McDonald's, you said it never steered you wrong. My uncle is in business. He travels for a living, right? And he told me McDonald's is consistent. Anywhere you go, McDonald's is pretty much the same. Right. I if own you, stock in it. That's why. And how you doing? You know. They the only thing that's ever let me down in a McDonald's in a drive thru is sometimes I'll get cold fries. And that yeah, kind of lets that's down brutal. the whole experience. That's my only gripe with this is like the mix like the But I feel like fries. the cold fries, that's anywhere. It's a problem all across the board. But it shouldn't be a problem at McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's got this like, thing down to like science. The turnover might have not been as quick as they thought. Yeah, yeah. So true. If you go at like peak times, it's gonna be fresh. Ah. And hot. But if you go at like a weird time. True. Yeah, if you go like then 3 like, o'clock in the afternoon, right. you're getting cold fries. You might get cold fries. Yeah. Same thing with like you might get a, like a little older burger patty. and Then it's dry. Or if you get if you get the quarter pounder, they make that on demand. Kuj, um, what, like, what would you say is like some of your, like your ideal goal? Like if you could pick something like for this coming year, like that you would want to happen, like... In your career, like, what would you right. say? I would you say, want? honestly, just win the lottery and <laughs> never fucking post on Instagram ever again. Really? <laughs> you don't see yourself, like, in movies or in t on television? I mean, shows. yeah, I would, but, like, I'm not going to audition. I did do a movie. You kind of yeah, have to. zombie movie. I did do a zombie movie, as we know it, plugged it. I don't know why I didn't win an Oscar. That was wild. Um, but I could see, like, almost like a Jay and Silent Bob type movie but right. about you. Cool. I mean, I'm trying to get this, uh, not trying too hard. Let's get that straight. Um, do this animation show about, like, kind of like my life. Hell I, th yeah. I think it would just be funny. It would be hilarious. That's great. Because, like, it's ridiculous. And, like, every show just has, like, a different broad. 
Like that's like the backstory, and it's just called down horrendous. And it's just like, you know, is it gonna be like a Family Guy type show? Yeah, like that yeah, yeah. Dark humor. Yeah, horrible. Love that. Yeah. Love that. I mean, th- those those types of animated shows are really blowing up. What's the one uh, yeah. uh, about puberty? Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Big Mouth is fucking hilarious. Big Mouth is hilarious. I haven't seen that one. It's good. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, man. You want to talk about an unhinged fucking show? It's fucking hilarious. Seth MacFarlane has a TED series out now. That's tremendous. Does he? A TED series. Yeah. Like, like Ted, the teddy bear. Ted the teddy bear. That guy's great. Yeah. <laughs> tremendous. Uh, an animated Koosh series. That's fucking exciting. Yeah, so that would be... That's my second goal. The first goal is to win the lottery. Yeah. But, like, I've always wanted to win the lottery and do nothing because that's what I love to do is just to do nothing. Yeah. So, like, I don't want to work. I don't want to do nothing. I like living like a retired person. Right. I mean, that's basically what I do now. Yeah. Except, you know, that retired person who decides to get a job at Home Depot once a week. It's basically me. Except yeah. I'm not working at Home Depot. I'm, you know, saying horrible things on the internet. Yeah, but that's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, which is basically what the retired men do at Home Depot. They oh, say yeah. horrible things. True. They just say it to people. <laughs> it just it's just not as worth it. You right. know? Like they'll they do, it do it for it nothing. For, they do it for fifteen an hour. Yeah, right, right, right. What would you do if you won the lottery? Like would nothing. you would you go to Florida? Would you Nah, I would like, probably just buy some sick penthouse and just get weird seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Mr. Deeds. <laughs> and then, you know, that would probably last about three to five years. Put me in a coffin. I wanna go in the wall. In, in the, the wall, nice. Guy. You don't class. want to be buried. All I class. I want to be buried. No. Freaks you out. Yeah. It's you like, can get buried with a bell. You ever hear the term "saved by the bell"? Yeah, because they didn't know if they were dead, and then they would ring the bell. It was in it was in the United Kingdom and Ireland. These these guys would get well, tanked. They, yeah, they were still like so drunk, like they didn't even know if they were dead. So they buried them with a string and a bell above their ground, and it would ring it if they woke up in a couple of days. That's the story behind that. Saved by the bell. I think I want to be cremated just because I don't want to be burdened on anybody when I leave. No, nah, I do. I don't want to save up any money for my funeral. Uh, I can get 15 guys to carry me. Put me in a pine box, light it on fire, and get rid of it. No, I'm, I'm yeah. That way, you know, if, let's say, let's say, you know, G, instead of burying me, she cremates me, right? This way, she can move to Florida, and I still got to go with her. Every guy she meets after I die has got to look at me on the mantle. I kind of like that. <laughs> Unless my mother steals it. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm sure my mother like, is a bit of a klepto. I'm, I'm sure like you'll be like spread around. So a little with your mother, maybe with G. Yeah, maybe you, everyone takes a piece of me. Yeah. yeah you're right. Hopefully no, I kind of want to. your cock. Yeah, now right. I want you to put a little in this espresso cup right here. <laughs> is that right? Oh, yeah. A little ashes? For yeah, you? yeah, yeah. That's not Just in case. Milk. See, yeah, but then that, that's another thing I haven't considered. Like you got to con- you got to think, well. Who gets my ashes and who's not allowed to have them? Like, there's right. some people I don't want having my, uh, they call them cremains, you know? I don't, you know, certain people I don't want walking around with a little bit of me in their pocket. My only thing with that, though, is like, how do you know it's you? Like, that's all they do is burn bodies all day. So, here's another thing that I recently considered a couple weeks ago. Gianna uh, has a friend, childhood friend, his father passed away, and they went to return the ashes to the mother. And they look, and it's a different name on the bag inside the urn. They gave her someone else. Yeah. <laughs> That's... What are you doing in that situation? Uh, you call a lawyer. I told I told you Jay. Yeah. You sue for that? 100%. They gave you someone else's dead loved one. You and the people they gave you could sue for that. Right. You, you'll own the fucking crematorium at the end of the day. That's nice. Now, that, if that happens... That would be great. I thought of it this way. John was like, oh, you're not getting cremated. I said, no, no, no. Think about it this way. You get my life insurance plus the settlement. Right. That means you get the lump sum, and then you get the, the structured settlement. J.G. Wentworth, okay. how you doing? Yeah. J.G. Wentworth. Oh, you got life insurance? Yeah. Oh, I don't got any of that. You know what's good about life insurance? Right? You do whole life, you could borrow against it. That way, if you have a girl or two, you could pay for those weddings. Oh, uh, yeah. So you got a vowel at the end well, of your no, last name. Like, you got to pay for the wedding. No, no. That 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 don't exist how I grew sure up. Sure does. For me, it's like, I got a daughter. You figure it out. You Yeah, you <laughs> say that. I ain't going to pay because you want to be a fucking 
marry some stroons. Listen. And I got to fit the bill for that. You know, I'll chip in, but I ain't fucking paying. You know how much it's going to be in 30 years of wedding? Well, it's almost a quarter million dollars now. Well, that's, that. I think that's like an extravagant, crazy wedding. Listen, you saw Rocco's wedding, huh? Well, I wasn't there, but yeah, that was probably. That a, was a big how you doing wedding. I was, yeah. You pay all this money for this wedding nowadays, because now it's ridiculous. You pay all this money for the wedding, and what do these, what do these people do? They go back in a book. From 30 years ago when they got married to see what your parents what you gave them. For inflation? They don't adjust for inflation. They come with $300 in an envelope. Meanwhile, it's costing you five, $600 a head. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't believe you should cover your plate because you're, I'm your guest. You're paying for me. Yeah, but you got to do the right thing. Right. You still have to. You don't get... want them to start out with debt. You want them to have a nice start. That's where you're going. You're going to celebrate and you bring the envelope. This is for you to have a nice start. Yeah, sure. That's how it is. That's how it's done. So, like, what do you put in that? Well, 500 for a couple? Sure, That's at least. Yeah, right. I would say five. That's at at the least five. Yeah. The minimum, fuck that. The minimum five. 500, 600. Well, it depends. You go to a wedding, right? It's at a hall. You bring five, 600. But you bring small bills. That way, if it ends up being a buffet, you take a couple dollars out. A buffet wedding? Is- I've seen a buffet wedding. Does that. They listen, it's all right. But then I know, all right, I could take a couple dollars out. You know? Sunday weddings, that's no problem. Well, listen, I got a lot of Jewish friends, a lot of Sunday weddings. I don't tax for that. Sunday weddings just aren't that fun. Sure. No one's getting that banged up. Bro, where do we got to be on Monday that we can't get banged up at a well, Sunday yeah, wedding? Yeah, but the average person is not. Yeah, but he can't I'm in agreement with that. Banged up. Right. If the wedding's on, I just like, had a Sunday wedding like a month ago. I ended up yeah. throwing up at the end of the night. <laughs> See, it didn't stop you. No. It What's it like you. when you go to a wedding? Like, do you have people like stop you constantly? Because I mean, you're going to like a hall of concentrated Italian people, probably. I'm assuming. Yeah. So this it's, one was my brother's coworker, and the coworker she was like, "Can your brother come as your plus one?" Oh wow, you were requesting. Basically requested. They were, that was how they get you to do an appearance for free. Basically, we, we, yeah, I did an appearance for free. You know how many weddings I got invited to, Kuj? Come on. Yeah. Sal, you're already here. Just like, like you know, freaking, how do you sing a song? So like, you, I hate when, I hate when they sing So you get, you get invited to your, your brother's co-worker's wedding? I mean, I wasn't invited. My brother was invited. Right. But you got invited as, a, as like a tertiary invite. Like a, yeah, like a plus one. Yeah. So what is it like when you go to a wedding now? Whatever. I just sit there. A lot of people stare at me, and then I take pictures, and then I, you know, just drink to wow. get it over with. Yeah. Are you, do you find yourself, like, as popular with the ladies at a wedding as you are at, you know, uh, DJs or? DJs is like a zoo. DJs yeah. It's literally a whole house. That's why I'm, I'm trying to compare like the two extremes. No, nah, wedding, like I keep it classy. Very good. Especially if there's like family there. Then it's oh, like, yeah. All right, let's not get that weird. Like, <laughs> So you're a lot more old school than you give yourself credit for. Yeah. Because you're like, you listen, know. I don't need uh, I don't need to go back to my mother. last wedding I did on s- the, the Sunday wedding, my f- yeah. my brother's coworker, I literally put a story up of like them dancing. And I was like over under five years. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Hammered the under. But that's like an honor yeah. to be roasted by Cooge. Right. I think that's better than any envelope they could have gotten. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't chipping in for that envelope. That was all <laughs> my brother. Oh, good. Fair enough. Right, because you were his plus one. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the prize. You, yeah. you, you, you give the boost. My yeah. presence is payment enough. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see yourself getting married? Uh, that means no. I mean, you, you live the life of a rock star, so that's the only reason why that is. Not now, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I feel like. You've got a lot of living to do right now. Yeah, I guess if the right person, you know, cons me into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically how it is, right, Sam? Oh, yeah, you get tricked. Yeah, hundred percent. Got to be Italian. Nah, I'm not like that into that. Yeah, it would be you know a nice nice plus, but you fall in love, you get that feeling you can't see yourself or be with anybody else, right? Right. Plus, her cooking is great, right? Right. And all, all everything lines up. You're like, I can't do any. I'm never gonna do any better than this. Right. You're basically yeah. Yeah. And then like you gotta have kids. Oh yeah. 
Just gotta, for your parents' sake, not even your sake. It's like you got to raise them. At the very least, you got to pick someone who you could see yourself having kids with, even if they're not the right. person you well, spend the rest like of your life Well, I feel like there are, like, some girls that, like, you'll marry and, like, you're not going to have kids with them, and then there's, like, others that are, like, mother figures. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's, like, a few soulmates for everybody, I think. Yeah. Just not every soulmate has, like, the same life plan. And all in time. All in time. All in time. All in due time. All in due time. Have you ever, like, um... <laughs> I'm trying to think of what a kuj, what a kuj like vow would be, like what a kuj what vow, a kuj vow. I could be like I'm gonna oh, bang like your sister the for like the rest of the time yeah. or something like that. Yeah, no, that would be to, no, that could be to a. Would you tell your wife you could bang a sister till the end of time? Like that would be a kuj vow. Yeah, you want to get down horrendous forever. <laughs> you want to brush be my down hair for, life? for you forever. Yeah, that's right. Ever make sure you're taking care and brushing my hair. Yeah. Along with my brajol. <laughs> I made G promise to make me chicken cutlets, literally, in front of our entire family on my knee. I I, I pulled the ring back. I said, You're gonna make cut you're gonna you're gonna make cutlets like forever, right? Like you're not gonna stop that. That's not gonna end. Right. Even when you're mad at me. And she, I made a promise and then I put it on. I said, All right. That's how you know. <laughs> Do you get the cutlets? I get the cutlets. That's nice. the- I get the cutlets. How you doing? <laughs> All right. I, I mean, there's no better way to, to leave it than that. Because uh, you're a sensation. And you, you've you blessed us with your presence today. You really have. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we yeah. can't wait to see you on TV. We can't wait to see you in the movies. Please don't quit making the videos because the world yeah. loves it. The world needs yeah, Kuj. Yeah, I know. I do it for the people. What the world needs now is Kuj. Sweet Kuj. Kuj, and don't, like, uh, about the inspiration thing, like, just think, like, there are people like Sal and I and Greg, maybe Greg, I don't know. But uh, like, you know, we all what look. The fuck? I'm, yeah, yeah, just yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it later, yeah. Greg. Um, He's got some clean air forces on. I, He's got balls. Yeah, like we all look forward to like what you're doing. Yeah. So, like, oh, yeah. We all look forward to it. And like, you know, just um, it really is an art. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I look forward to Saturday morning being hung over as well and seeing those stories. Oh, all right. So for you, Greg, I'll do it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cooch. Thank you for coming on the show, Cooch. I, oh, really, I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. It. Take uh, care, Bushy. Yeah.